There's been an ongoing feud among Christians for a long time, a battle between the holiness camp and the grace camp. Now, the holiness side is preoccupied with works, things that you do, your behavior, a checklist of things that you must accomplish in order to please a perfectly holy God. And they often sound something like this. God is coming back one day, and he's not coming back to give you a big hug. He's coming back to judge the world. You need to be afraid. You need to repent of your sins. Condemnation is coming. Judgment is coming. Sin, judgment, condemnation. <laughs> so the holiness camp is completely focused on the wrath of God the judgment of God, and uses fear to promote human effort, human works. Now, the grace side, on the other hand, is on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. The grace camp often completely disregards the judgment, and sometimes even the respect, worthy of God. On the extreme, the grace side sounds something like this. Oh, you know everything is fine. God loves you. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, everything is just fine and dandy all the time. So which is it? Is God suffering from some kind of multiple personality disorder? Well, as you might expect, neither of these positions tell the whole story. And the truth of God's character his nature, and the gospel message is far greater. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Thriving Branch. I'm Jim. And today we are discussing holiness versus grace. Which one is right? This has been a point of contention among Christians for a long time, and it's something that has caused people to divide into two different camps. One that I call the holiness camp, and one that I call the grace camp. And I've been accused of being one or the other, and sometimes even both. But in order to really understand what is right from a scriptural perspective, we need to answer a few questions. The first of which being, what is holiness? Do we even know what holiness is? The word holiness is often misunderstood. When we think of holiness, our minds usually picture a pious figure who can never actually have any kind of fun. Someone who is so fixated on their moral purity that you probably don't even want to be around them. That's the image that was implanted in my mind when I was in Sunday school. However, the word holiness in scripture means to be set apart for an intended purpose. This is also called sanctification. What is sanctification exactly? What is holiness? Well, for example, if I have a glass of water and I pour water into that glass and I drink from that glass, then I have sanctified that glass because that is its intended purpose. The glass is made to hold water and made for someone to drink from. That's all sanctification really is. Nothing more, nothing less. Being set apart for an intended purpose. Now, obviously, when speaking spiritually, within the context of Scripture, sanctification, or also wise known as holiness, has a very specific purpose in mind, a purpose directly from God. But understanding this basic fact about the meaning of sanctification, the meaning of holiness, is crucial to understanding how it fits in to God's plan and His sacrificial accomplishment. 
So that's holiness in, in a nutshell. So then, what is grace? Sadly, grace is equally as misunderstood as holiness is. So mercy means to relent. Grace means to be given unmerited favor. So in short, mercy is God relenting, not giving us the punishment that we rightfully deserve, while grace is God giving us the blessings, unmerited favor, that we don't deserve. And both of these tie into holiness. As we look at these two definitions of mercy and grace, we can see the goodness and the character of God on full display. And this can inform us about the topic of holiness versus grace as well. Since we know that holiness means to be set apart for an intended purpose, we need to ask, in what way? How are we set apart? What's our purpose? Well, for that answer, let's take a look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, to obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith to salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And what these scriptures show us is that contrary to the typical thoughts of those in the holiness camp, our holiness, our sanctification, does not come by our actions or our efforts or works. It doesn't come by our strength, but it comes as a direct result of the Spirit of God. And as verse 2 points out here, by the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit, to the obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. So we can see that the entire Trinity is intimately involved in our sanctification. We can't take any credit for this. It is God who accomplished the works. Verse 5 makes it clear that we are kept by the power of God through faith. God's the one who keeps you through faith, and even that faith is not of yourself. Remember that faith, too, is a fruit of the Spirit. So again, we have nothing to do with this. We can take no credit for this. This is God working in us and through us by His Spirit because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the will of God. This is all the will of God the Father, because he loves you. Jesus is your sanctification. The scripture makes it clear in places such as Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, and 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, that contrary to popular belief, holiness is not a process. It is something that was done once for all. I know a lot of people like to talk about progressive sanctification, and that's a fancy word. It sounds really religious, but the scripture tells us Jesus sanctified us once for all through his sacrifice. Jesus was so satisfied, in fact, with his work that not only did he declare the work to be finished, but he did what no other priest had ever done. He sat down because the work was completed. Today, 
Jesus is your sanctification. His righteousness, his wisdom, his sanctification is yours. And he gives it to you freely, not because it's worthless or cheap, but because it is priceless. It costs more than any of us could ever pay. And for those in the grace camp, there's a lesson here for you too. Holiness is not something to be disregarded. It's not something that you have to fight against. These are not two competing ideas. Holiness and grace are not in competition with each other, but they're both things to be received and embraced. Just remember, holiness doesn't come from you, and neither does your salvation, neither does your blessings. You don't earn either of those. You don't earn holiness, you don't earn blessings. You don't keep holiness, you don't keep blessings. You do not maintain them. They are given to you as gifts. So holiness and grace, again, they're both gifts from God to you. They both operate together in perfect harmony in Christ. I look forward to thriving with you again. Be blessed.